Chapter 1, The Entrepreneurial Myth. The chapter sets the stage for the book by introducing the entrepreneurial myth, the belief that small businesses are started by entrepreneurs who are passionate about their work and are experts in their field. The author argues that this myth is not only false but also dangerous, as it leads to the failure of most small businesses. Gerber explains that the myth overlooks the fact that most small business owners are not entrepreneurs but rather technicians who are skilled at a specific trade, such as baking or plumbing. These technicians mistakenly believe that starting a business doing what they know how to do will automatically make them successful entrepreneurs. However, they soon find that running a business involves more than just performing technical work, and they become overwhelmed by the demands of the business. The author asserts that successful small businesses require a different approach than the one commonly taken by technicians. Instead of relying solely on technical skills, small business owners need to learn how to work on their business, not just in it. This involves developing systems, processes, and strategies that can be repeated and scaled up as the business grows. Gerber concludes the chapter by stating that the key to success for small businesses is not to become a better technician but to become an entrepreneur who can create and run a business. This requires learning new skills and adopting a new mindset, one that focuses on the big picture and sees the business as a system. Only by embracing this new approach can small business owners achieve their goals and avoid the pitfalls that cause most small businesses to fail. Chapter 2 the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician, chapter 2 expands on the ideas introduced in the first chapter by exploring the three personalities that exist within every small business owner, the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. The author explains that these three personalities represent different aspects of the business owner's personality and that each personality has a unique role to play in the success of the business. The entrepreneur is the visionary who creates the business idea and is responsible for its growth and development. The manager is the planner who takes the entrepreneur's vision and turns it into a plan that can be executed. Finally, the technician is the doer who performs the technical work required to produce the product or service that the business offers. The author argues that most small business owners are primarily technicians skilled at a specific trade but lacking the skills necessary to manage or grow a business. They are also prone to the entrepreneurial seizure, which occurs when a technician decides to start a business without realizing the complexities involved in running a business. Gerber explains that successful small business owners must develop all three personalities and learn how to balance them. They need to be able to think like an entrepreneur, plan like a manager, and work like a technician. This requires developing new skills, such as leadership, delegation, and system creation. The chapter concludes by emphasizing the importance of developing all three personalities and learning how to balance them effectively. Gerber suggests that small business owners should focus on working on their business rather than in it and should develop systems and processes that enable them to delegate tasks to others. By doing so, they can create a business that works for them rather than being trapped in a business that they work for. Chapter 3, Infancy, The Technician's Phase In Chapter 3 Michael E. Gerber describes the early phase of a business, which he calls, Infancy, The Technician's Phase. This phase is characterized by the entrepreneur's enthusiasm and energy, as they work tirelessly to get their business off the ground. However, Gerber argues that this is also the phase where many small business owners make critical mistakes that can harm their long-term success. Gerber emphasizes the importance of having a clear understanding of the three distinct roles that must be played in any business, the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. In the technician's phase, the entrepreneur is often focused solely on doing the work of the business, rather than on building the systems and processes necessary for sustainable growth. As a result, they may become overwhelmed and burned out, and their business may struggle to survive. To overcome this challenge, Gerber recommends that entrepreneurs focus on developing their managerial skills and creating systems and processes that can be replicated by others. This means learning how to delegate tasks, hiring and training employees, and implementing clear guidelines and procedures for all aspects of the business. By doing so, entrepreneurs can begin to move out of the technician's phase and into the next phase of their business's growth. Gerber also stresses the importance of maintaining a customer-focused mindset, 
even in the early stages of a business. By prioritizing the needs and desires of their customers, entrepreneurs can build a loyal customer base that will support the growth of their business in the long run. Overall, Chapter 3 of The E-Myth Revisited highlights the critical importance of balancing the roles of entrepreneur, manager, and technician in the early stages of a business. By focusing on creating systems and processes, delegating tasks, and maintaining a customer-centric approach, entrepreneurs can set their businesses up for sustainable success. Chapter 4, Adolescence. Getting some help, in Chapter 4, author Michael E. Gerber discusses the adolescence phase of a small business, which he describes as a critical turning point. This is the phase where the business has grown beyond the sole proprietorship stage, and the entrepreneur is faced with the challenge of managing a team of employees. Gerber emphasizes that this is a crucial phase for the business because it is where many entrepreneurs begin to lose control. They may struggle to delegate tasks effectively, fail to establish clear roles and responsibilities for their employees, and struggle to maintain the quality of their products or services. To overcome these challenges, Gerber recommends that entrepreneurs focus on building a strong organizational structure. This involves creating clear job descriptions, setting performance standards, and implementing processes and procedures that ensure consistency and quality. By doing so, entrepreneurs can begin to delegate tasks and responsibilities to their employees freeing up their time to focus on strategic growth opportunities. Gerber also emphasizes the importance of creating a company culture that aligns with the entrepreneur's vision and values. This means hiring employees who share those values, providing training and development opportunities, and fostering a sense of teamwork and collaboration. Another key aspect of the adolescence phase is developing a marketing strategy that is focused on generating new leads and attracting new customers. Gerber recommends that entrepreneurs focus on creating a compelling message that speaks directly to their target market, and that they use a variety of channels to reach those potential customers. Overall, Chapter 4 of The E-Myth Revisited highlights the importance of building a strong organizational structure, developing a company culture that supports growth, and implementing a marketing strategy that drives new business. By focusing on these key areas, entrepreneurs can successfully navigate the adolescence phase of their business and set the stage for continued growth and success. Chapter 5, Beyond the Comfort Zone In Chapter 5, Michael E. Gerber discusses the importance of stepping outside of one's comfort zone to achieve growth and success in a small business. Gerber argues that many entrepreneurs become trapped in their comfort zones, relying on familiar routines and practices that may have worked in the past but are no longer effective. To break out of this cycle, Gerber recommends that entrepreneurs focus on innovation and experimentation. This means challenging existing assumptions, seeking out new ideas and perspectives, and taking calculated risks to try new approaches. Gerber emphasizes the importance of maintaining a growth mindset and viewing challenges and failures as opportunities for learning and improvement. He encourages entrepreneurs to seek out mentors and advisors who can provide guidance and support, and to surround themselves with a diverse group of people who can offer different perspectives and ideas. Another key aspect of breaking out of one's comfort zone is developing a clear vision for the future of the business. Gerber encourages entrepreneurs to think big and to set ambitious goals for themselves and their businesses. By doing so, they can create a sense of purpose and direction that can guide their decision-making and motivate their employees. Finally, Gerber stresses the importance of staying focused and disciplined in the pursuit of one's goals. He encourages entrepreneurs to develop a system for tracking progress, measuring results, and making adjustments as needed to stay on track. Overall, Chapter 5 of The E-Myth Revisited highlights the importance of stepping outside of one's comfort zone to achieve growth and success in a small business. By embracing innovation, seeking out new perspectives, and setting ambitious goals, entrepreneurs can create a culture of continuous improvement that can drive their businesses to new heights. Chapter 6, Maturity and the Entrepreneurial Perspective In Chapter 6, author Michael E. Gerber discusses the final phase of a small business, maturity. This is the phase where the business has become a well-established and successful operation, and the entrepreneur has the opportunity to take a step back and reflect on their achievements. 
Gerber argues that the key to success in the maturity phase is maintaining an entrepreneurial perspective. This means continuing to focus on innovation, experimentation, and growth, even as the business becomes more established and predictable. To maintain this perspective, Gerber recommends that entrepreneurs focus on three key areas, innovation, quantification, and orchestration. Innovation involves seeking out new ideas and perspectives, and constantly looking for ways to improve the business. Quantification involves measuring and analyzing key performance metrics, and using this data to make informed decisions about the business. Orchestration involves creating clear processes and systems that allow the business to run smoothly and efficiently, even as it grows and evolves. Gerber also emphasizes the importance of developing a strong team and delegating tasks effectively. This means identifying key roles and responsibilities, hiring employees who are a good fit for those roles, and providing them with the training and support they need to succeed. Finally, Gerber encourages entrepreneurs to focus on building a strong brand and reputation. This means developing a clear and compelling message that speaks to the values and needs of their target market, and delivering a consistent and high-quality experience to their customers. Overall, Chapter 6 of The E-Myth Revisited highlights the importance of maintaining an entrepreneurial perspective even as the business matures. By focusing on innovation, quantification, orchestration, team building, and branding, entrepreneurs can continue to drive growth and success in their businesses for years to come. Chapter 7, The Turnkey Revolution. In Chapter 7, author Michael E. Gerber introduces the concept of the turnkey revolution, which involves creating businesses that are designed to be easily replicated and scaled. Gerber argues that the traditional approach to starting a business is flawed, as it relies heavily on the skills and abilities of the individual entrepreneur. This can lead to a lack of scalability and sustainability, as the business may struggle to grow beyond the limits of the entrepreneur's time and resources. The turnkey revolution, on the other hand, involves creating businesses that are designed from the ground up to be easily replicated and scaled. This means developing clear and detailed systems and processes for every aspect of the business, from marketing and sales to operations and customer service. Gerber emphasizes the importance of standardization in this approach, as it allows the business to maintain consistency and quality even as it grows and expands. This requires developing a clear and comprehensive operations manual that outlines every aspect of the business in detail. To successfully implement the turnkey revolution, Gerber recommends focusing on four key areas, innovation, quantification, orchestration, and business format franchising. Business format franchising involves developing a turnkey system that can be replicated and licensed to others, allowing the business to grow and expand beyond the limits of a single entrepreneur. Overall, Chapter 7 of The E-Myth Revisited highlights the importance of the turnkey revolution in creating businesses that are scalable, sustainable, and profitable. By focusing on innovation, quantification, orchestration, and business format franchising, Entrepreneurs can create businesses that are designed to succeed and thrive over the long term. Chapter 8, The Franchise Prototype In Chapter 8, author Michael E. Gerber delves deeper into the concept of business format franchising, which he introduced in the previous chapter. Gerber argues that the key to success in creating a turnkey business that can be replicated and scaled is developing a franchise prototype. The franchise prototype is essentially a blueprint for the business outlining every aspect of the operation in detail. This includes not only the standardization of operations and procedures, but also the development of a strong brand and marketing strategy. Gerber emphasizes the importance of developing a strong brand identity that speaks to the values and needs of the target market. This involves creating a clear and compelling message that differentiates the business from competitors and resonates with customers. To develop a successful franchise prototype, Gerber recommends focusing on four key areas, visual, emotional, functional, and financial. The visual component involves creating a clear and memorable brand identity, including logos, signage, and other visual elements. The emotional component involves creating a strong emotional connection with customers through the use of compelling messaging and storytelling. The functional component involves developing clear and detailed systems and processes for every aspect of the business. 
Finally, the financial component involves developing a clear understanding of the financial aspects of the business, including revenue streams, costs, and profitability. Gerber also emphasizes the importance of testing and refining the franchise prototype through a process of continuous improvement. This involves collecting feedback from customers, employees, and other stakeholders, and using this feedback to make informed decisions about the business. Overall, Chapter 8 of The E-Myth Revisited highlights the importance of developing a strong franchise prototype as the foundation for a successful turnkey business. By focusing on the visual, emotional, functional, and financial components of the business, and continuously testing and refining the model, entrepreneurs can create businesses that are designed to succeed and thrive over the long term. Chapter 9, Working on Your Business, Not In It, In Chapter 9, Author Michael E. Gerber argues that one of the biggest challenges facing small business owners is the tendency to get caught up in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. Gerber emphasizes the importance of working on the business, rather than in it, in order to achieve long-term success. To work on the business, Gerber recommends developing a strategic plan that outlines the long-term vision and goals for the business. This involves defining the company's mission, values, and objectives, and developing a clear strategy for achieving these goals. Gerber also emphasizes the importance of developing a strong management team that can help to implement the strategic plan and take on day-to-day -day responsibilities. This involves identifying and developing key employees, delegating responsibilities, and creating clear systems and processes for every aspect of the business. Gerber recommends developing a system for measuring and tracking progress towards the company's goals, such as key performance indicators, KPIs. This allows the business owner to track progress and make informed decisions about the direction of the business. Gerber also emphasizes the importance of developing a strong company culture, based on shared values and a sense of purpose. This involves creating a positive work environment, providing opportunities for growth and development, and recognizing and rewarding employees for their contributions. Finally, Gerber recommends that business owners take time to step back and reflect on their goals and priorities, in order to maintain a long-term perspective and avoid getting caught up in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. Overall, Chapter 9 of The E-Myth Revisited highlights the importance of working on the business, rather than in it, in order to achieve long-term success. By developing a strategic plan, building a strong management team, measuring progress towards goals, creating a strong company culture, and maintaining a long-term perspective, entrepreneurs can create businesses that are designed to succeed and thrive over the long term. Chapter 10, The Business Development Program. In Chapter 10, author Michael E. Gerber introduces the Business Development Program, BDP, as a way for small business owners to work on their businesses rather than in them. The BDP is a step-by-step -step program designed to help business owners create a strategic plan, build a management team, and create systems and processes that can be replicated and scaled over time. The BDP consists of four phases. The dreaming phase, the vision phase, the purpose phase, and the mission phase. During the dreaming phase, business owners are encouraged to think big and identify their ideal outcomes for the business. The vision phase involves developing a clear picture of what the business will look like in the future, including its values, culture, and systems. The purpose phase involves defining the company's purpose, or why it exists, and the mission phase involves creating a strategic plan for achieving the company's goals. Gerber emphasizes the importance of building a strong management team, and the BDP includes a detailed process for identifying and developing key employees who can help to implement the strategic plan. This involves identifying the core competencies and values that are essential for success in the business, and developing systems for recruiting, training, and retaining top talent. The BDP also includes a process for creating systems and processes that can be replicated and scaled over time. This involves documenting every aspect of the business, from the sales process to customer service, and creating detailed procedures and checklists that can be used to train new employees and ensure consistency and quality over time. Finally, Gerber emphasizes the importance of measuring and tracking progress towards the company's goals, using KPIs and other metrics to evaluate the effectiveness of the business and make informed decisions about its direction. 
Overall, Chapter 10 of The E-Myth Revisited introduces the business development program as a comprehensive framework for building a successful and scalable small business. By following the BDP process, business owners can create a strategic plan, build a strong management team, develop systems and processes that can be replicated and scaled, and measure progress towards their goals over time. Chapter 11, Your Business Development Program. In Chapter 11, author Michael E. Gerber presents a detailed overview of the Business Development Program, BDP, introduced in the previous chapter. He explains how the BDP is designed to help small business owners create a strategic plan, build a management team, and develop systems and processes that can be replicated and scaled over time. Gerber emphasizes the importance of having a clear vision and purpose for the business, as well as a set of core values that guide decision-making and behavior. He also stresses the need for a comprehensive strategic plan, which should include specific goals, timelines, and action steps to achieve those goals. The BDP also includes a process for identifying and developing key employees who can help to implement the strategic plan. This involves creating a clear job description for each position, identifying the core competencies and values required for success in each role, and developing a training program to ensure that employees have the necessary skills and knowledge. Gerber also discusses the importance of creating systems and processes that can be replicated and scaled over time. This involves documenting every aspect of the business, from the sales process to customer service, and creating detailed procedures and checklists that can be used to train new employees and ensure consistency and quality over time. Finally, Gerber emphasizes the importance of measuring and tracking progress towards the company's goals, using KPIs and other metrics to evaluate the effectiveness of the business and make informed decisions about its direction. Throughout the chapter, Gerber provides practical advice and examples to help small business owners apply the principles of the BDP to their own businesses. He encourages readers to think strategically and to focus on building a business that can work without them, rather than simply creating a job for themselves. Overall, Chapter 11 of The E-Myth Revisited provides a comprehensive overview of the business development program and offers practical advice for small business owners who want to build a successful and scalable business. By following the BDP process, business owners can create a clear vision and purpose for their business, build a strong management team, develop systems and processes that can be replicated and scaled, and measure progress towards their goals over time. Chapter 12 your primary aim, in Chapter 12 of The E-Myth Revisited, author Michael E. Gerber introduces the concept of the primary aim as a critical component of building a successful business. The primary aim is defined as the most important goal or objective that a business owner wants to achieve in their life, beyond just running a successful business. Gerber argues that many small business owners get so caught up in the day-to-day -day operations of their business that they lose sight of their true purpose and goals. The primary aim is meant to help business owners reconnect with their deeper motivations and aspirations, and to use those as a guiding force for their business decisions. To determine your primary aim, Gerber suggests engaging in a process of self-reflection and introspection, asking questions such as, what do I want my life to look like, and what do I want to accomplish before I die? This process can help business owners clarify their values, identify their unique strengths and passions, and develop a clear vision for their future. Once a business owner has identified their primary aim, they can use that as a guide for their business decisions, ensuring that every aspect of the business is aligned with their deeper purpose and values. This can include everything from hiring employees who share their vision and values, to choosing the right location and target market, to designing products and services that are meaningful and impactful. Gerber emphasizes that the primary aim is not just about achieving financial success, but about creating a business that is truly fulfilling and aligned with your deepest aspirations. By focusing on your primary aim, you can create a business that is both personally and professionally rewarding, and that helps you achieve the life you truly desire. Overall, Chapter 12 of The E-Myth Revisited emphasizes the importance of having a clear primary aim as a guiding force for your business decisions. By aligning your business with your deeper purpose and values, you can create a business that is both successful and fulfilling, 
and that helps you achieve the life you truly desire. Chapter 13, Your Organizational Strategy In Chapter 13 of The E-Myth Revisited, author Michael E. Gerber discusses the importance of developing an organizational strategy for your business. Gerber argues that many small business owners fail to create a clear structure for their business, which can lead to confusion, inefficiency, and a lack of direction. To develop an effective organizational strategy, Gerber suggests starting by defining your business's key strategic objectives, as discussed in the previous chapter. Once you have a clear vision for the future of your business, you can begin to develop a structure that supports that vision. Gerber emphasizes the importance of creating a clear hierarchy of roles and responsibilities within your business. This involves defining specific roles for each member of your team and providing them with clear guidelines and expectations for their work. To ensure that your organizational strategy is effective, Gerber suggests implementing a system of performance metrics and regular check-ins. This can help you track progress and identify areas where your organizational structure may need to be adjusted. Gerber also discusses the importance of creating systems and processes to support your organizational structure. By developing clear procedures for tasks and workflows, you can ensure that your team is working efficiently and effectively. Overall, Chapter 13 of The E-Myth Revisited emphasizes the importance of developing a clear and effective organizational strategy for your business. By defining clear roles and responsibilities, implementing performance metrics, and creating systems and processes to support your team, you can create a structure that supports your long-term vision and helps your business to thrive. Chapter 14, Your Strategic Objective Chapter 14 of The E-Myth Revisited by Michael E. Gerber focuses on the importance of developing a strategic objective for your business. Gerber argues that without a clear and compelling strategic objective, it is easy for businesses to become bogged down in day-to-day -day operations and lose sight of their long-term goals. To develop a strategic objective, Gerber suggests starting with your primary aim, discussed in Chapter 12. Your primary aim is the vision for your life that you want your business to support, and it should inform your strategic objective. Gerber stresses the importance of developing a strategic objective that is both specific and inspiring. Your strategic objective should be a clear and measurable goal that motivates you and your team to work towards a common purpose. To ensure that your strategic objective is effective, Gerber suggests breaking it down into smaller, actionable goals. This allows you to track progress and adjust your strategy as needed to stay on track. Gerber also emphasizes the importance of communicating your strategic objective to your team. By involving your team in the development of your strategic objective and keeping them informed about your progress, you can create a sense of ownership and commitment that helps to drive your business forward. Finally, Gerber emphasizes the importance of staying focused on your strategic objective, even in the face of challenges and setbacks. By maintaining a clear vision of your long-term goals, you can make strategic decisions that support your business's growth and success. Overall, Chapter 14 of The E-Myth Revisited highlights the importance of developing a clear and compelling strategic objective for your business. By setting specific goals, breaking them down into actionable steps, and communicating your vision to your team, you can create a sense of purpose and direction that helps your business to thrive. Chapter 15, Your Management Strategy, Systems, in Chapter 15 of The E-Myth Revisited, Michael E. Gerber emphasizes the importance of creating effective systems to manage your business. He argues that without clearly defined systems and processes, it is difficult to achieve consistency and quality in your products or services. Gerber suggests that there are three types of systems that are essential for any business, hard systems, soft systems, and information systems. Hard systems are physical systems and processes, such as equipment and procedures, that are used to produce your products or services. Soft systems are the people-oriented processes, such as training and communication, that are essential for managing your employees. Information systems are the technology and data management processes that help you to track and analyze your business performance. Gerber also stresses the importance of creating systems that can be easily replicated, as this allows you to scale your business more efficiently. He suggests that businesses should document all of their processes and procedures in a clear and organized way, 
and use this documentation to train new employees and maintain consistency across all locations. Furthermore, Gerber emphasizes that creating effective systems requires a shift in mindset from working in your business to working on your business. This means dedicating time and resources to developing and refining your systems, rather than just focusing on day-to-day -day operations. Finally, Gerber suggests that effective systems should be continuously evaluated and improved to ensure they are meeting your business's needs. This requires a commitment to ongoing learning and development, as well as a willingness to make changes as needed. In summary, Chapter 15 of The E-Myth Revisited emphasizes the importance of creating effective systems to manage your business. By developing and documenting your processes, investing in technology and training, and continuously evaluating and improving your systems, you can create a more efficient, consistent, and scalable business. Chapter 16, Your People Strategy, The Heart of the System, Chapter 16 focuses on the importance of having a strong people strategy in place in order to create a successful business. The author argues that the success of a business is not just dependent on the systems and processes that are put in place, but also on the people who are responsible for carrying out those processes. Gerber suggests that there are three main components to a people strategy, job descriptions, organizational charts, and training programs. He believes that job descriptions should be clear and specific, outlining the responsibilities and expectations of each employee. Organizational charts should also be created in order to show the structure of the company and how each employee fits into that structure. Lastly, Gerber emphasizes the importance of training programs to ensure that employees are properly trained to carry out their job responsibilities. The author also discusses the importance of creating a company culture that aligns with the business's core values and mission. This includes developing a set of core values that are incorporated into the hiring process and ensuring that all employees understand and share those values. Gerber suggests that in order to create a successful people strategy, business owners need to take the time to understand their employees' motivations and needs, and create an environment that allows them to thrive. This includes providing opportunities for growth and development, creating a positive work environment, and fostering open communication and collaboration among team members. Overall, Gerber emphasizes that a strong people strategy is essential for creating a successful business. By investing in their employees and creating a positive work environment, business owners can create a team of motivated and dedicated individuals who are committed to the success of the company. Chapter 17 your marketing strategy, the heart of the business. In Chapter 17, Michael E. Gerber discusses the importance of having a solid marketing strategy to the success of a small business. He emphasizes that a business's marketing must be based on a clear understanding of its ideal customer and what they want, need, and expect from the business. Gerber argues that marketing should be the primary focus of a small business owner, rather than sales. Sales, he says, are a natural outcome of effective marketing. He suggests that business owners should use marketing to create a compelling story that speaks directly to their ideal customer, addressing their pain points and offering solutions. Gerber outlines a seven-step marketing strategy that small business owners can use to create a marketing plan. This includes identifying the target market, determining the business's unique selling proposition, creating a marketing message that speaks directly to the ideal customer, developing a marketing budget, creating a marketing calendar, measuring the results of marketing efforts, and adjusting the strategy as needed. He also emphasizes the importance of using a variety of marketing channels to reach customers, including online and offline methods. However, he warns against spreading oneself too thin and suggests focusing on a few key channels that are most likely to reach the ideal customer. Finally, Gerber reminds business owners that marketing is an ongoing process and that it requires consistent effort and investment. He stresses the importance of dedicating time and resources to marketing and continually refining and improving the strategy based on the results. Chapter 18, Your System Strategy In Chapter 18, Michael E. Gerber highlights the importance of having effective systems in a business. He argues that without proper systems, businesses cannot achieve efficiency and consistency, which are key to success. Gerber emphasizes that systems should be created with the end result in mind. 
In other words, business owners should envision what they want their business to look like in the future and design systems that will help them achieve that vision. He suggests starting with the simplest processes and then building from there. Each process should be documented in a step-by-step -step manner so that employees can easily follow them. Gerber also emphasizes the importance of creating a system for continuous improvement. This means regularly evaluating and refining systems to make them more efficient and effective. He suggests that business owners should review their systems at least once a year and make adjustments as necessary. Another key point in this chapter is the importance of having a system for hiring and training employees. Gerber suggests that businesses should have a hiring process that includes screening, interviewing, and testing candidates to ensure that they are a good fit for the company. Once hired, employees should be trained thoroughly and consistently so that they can perform their job duties effectively. Gerber also stresses the importance of having systems for customer service and quality control. These systems should ensure that customers are satisfied with the products or services provided by the business and that they are consistently of high quality. Overall, this chapter emphasizes that having effective systems is essential for the success of any business. By designing and implementing systems that are focused on achieving the desired outcome, businesses can achieve efficiency, consistency, and continuous improvement. Chapter 19, A Letter to Sarah In Chapter 19, Michael Gerber writes a letter to Sarah, an entrepreneur who is struggling with her business. He reminds her of the importance of having a clear understanding of her primary aim, strategic objective, and organizational strategy to create a business that works. He also emphasizes the importance of having a management strategy and people strategy to create systems that support the business. Gerber encourages Sarah to focus on developing systems in her business, such as a system for hiring employees, training them, and managing their performance. He explains that creating systems will allow her to focus on the bigger picture of her business instead of being bogged down in day-to-day -day operations. Gerber also encourages Sarah to think about her marketing strategy and how she can differentiate herself from her competition. He explains that a successful marketing strategy will attract customers who are aligned with her business's values and vision. Throughout the letter, Gerber emphasizes the importance of having a clear understanding of her business's purpose and direction. He encourages Sarah to constantly reflect on her business and ask herself if it is aligned with her primary aim and strategic objective. In conclusion, Gerber's letter to Sarah reinforces the key themes of the book, the importance of working on the business, not in it, the value of creating systems and processes, and the significance of having a clear purpose and direction.